Sunday afternoon in the Arizona Art. desert. Time for a bit of target practice. There you go. Alan is an Iraq war veteran. It looks like he's never left the combat zone. So I carry uh, five magazines on this. One, two, three, four, five for my AR. Alan helped launch veterans on patrol. They help homeless war veterans and are supported by armed, self-styled patriot groups. I'm training for uh, a type of event that uh, I will be wearing this 24-7, you know. He's preparing for all kinds of disasters, including, he says, the prospect of Hillary Clinton becoming president. Hillary wants to do everything that she humanly can to get rid of firearms. When you take away guns from law-abiding citizens, you make it so that people that illegally get guns have free range on the populace. Fears of a government conspiracy to take away guns, that on your belt. views once seen as fringe, run. are now at the Ooh, forefront in the presidential campaign. Alan and his friend Montana run through synchronized military Fire. drills. They're ready to defend their communities yeah, you could just pull by whatever out. means necessary. If somebody's trying to start a fight or an attack me, then this gives them a pretty good reason to rethink their life's choices. The two men used to work as private security contractors yeah. along this border with Mexico, so have seen the problems of drugs and illegal immigration firsthand. This is Mexico on your right, U.S. on your left. There's no more fence, there's nothing. There's just trees and bush. The handful of guards operating here are unable to cope with tens of thousands of people crossing illegally from Mexico each year. Many are searching for jobs, but some work for the cartels. Some civilian militias who patrol here have taken matters into their own hands, detaining Mexicans at gunpoint. It's here that Trump wants to build his wall. I will vote for Trump because of the fact that he is going to do something about this border. He sees the you problem. Him. I see Trump, yes, opening his mouth and saying some things that, that uh, to some people might constitute as uh, bigotry and constitute as racism. I see it as he wants to shed light on a problem that a lot of people are choosing not to look at. They're going to look up from their cappuccino inside a coffee shop in the middle of New York City and say, well, I, I don't see anything. They must not know what they're talking about. It doesn't affect them. From the border, the trail of undocumented people and drugs leads to Tucson. The brutal Mexican drugs cartels have put down roots across this city. Gang crime and drugs linked violence leaves residents feeling scared and vulnerable. Allen's organization, Veterans on Patrol, run this camp for homeless vets. Harley is actually a uh, seizure dog. At least one in ten adults in Tucson are former soldiers. Because out there in the streets, you don't get treated right. You Oh, I got spit on and called every name in the book. Baby killer, because I've been there. These men fought for America in Vietnam and Iraq. They feel they've been abandoned by the authorities. And you've got your drug dealers that come across. You've got your illegals that come across. We may have drugs and rapists and guns here already. We, we don't need more of it. <laughs> The vets told me how they feel intimidated by the illegal immigrants who sleep rough in the park just blocks away. Two marginalized groups with little help or support pitted against each other. It's, you know, it's just a very unsecured area that something you're needs aware to be done. In other parts of America, when they talk about a place like Arizona, they're going to get paranoid. Donald Trump's whipping them up into a frenzy. Well, absolutely. Let them come down here and live by the border and see what, you know, actually happens. The vets feel they need armed protection at this camp. And the fear that Hillary Clinton will take their guns away is just one reason these men are so against her. They also see her as corrupt and untrustworthy. Hillary needs to be in prison. 
go. Maybe execute. No, prison. I'm not going to go that route. But a real prison, she, though, she not needs, like a Yeah, she needs to go to prison. I mean, she is a criminal across the board. While Hillary Clinton may claim that she, rather than Trump, is a champion of military veterans, among this group of vets, she's deeply despised. These guys down on the border and... Two hours away in Phoenix, another branch of Veterans on Patrol is about to hit the streets. But first, their leader, Lewis, is doing a live broadcast on Facebook to his followers. Um, our teams that come out with us, they do carry weapons, but they're trained and they're responsible. Lewis explains how they tried to stop crime, including patrolling the red light district. Our teams will walk down the streets. As soon as the girls and the guys, as soon as they see us coming, you would see the transactions break up and the girl go one way and the guy go another because they thought we were cops. Today, veterans on patrol are being backed up by an armed citizens group called the Three Percenters. They have thousands of members nationwide. They call themselves a patriot movement, but their critics see them as an anti-government militia. The patrol sets out. First stop, the Golden Arches. It's an odd sight seeing armed civilians in a McDonald's, but in Arizona, openly carrying guns is legal. We build a freaking camp in Tucson. And they operate with the approval of the local police. One officer stops for a friendly chat. They've gone out to help the homeless, giving out food and medical help. But not everyone in town welcomes them. Yeah, I just thought you guys were like Nazis or something. Yeah, That's right. a little Sometimes bit. they think we're Nazis. Right. <laughs> Why, what do you guys call yourselves? It's veterans on patrol and then the Arizona three percenters. The irony of an all-white armed patrol operating with police blessing is not lost on some here. Yeah, I, I think I think if I had like a gun like on my hip, like openly. I went on a patrol. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think I think I think if I like went in people's neighborhoods, people would call the police like right away. He's able to laugh this one off. But America is on edge. So what have we got here? Uh, this looks like flour. In this increasingly fraught atmosphere, Rice Alan has many fears. Civil unrest, no just one of them. Some type of uh, um, uh, third party attack, let's say. Whether that be a Muslim extremists, whether that be um, a collapse of the federal government, whether that be uh, some type of dirty bomb in the United States, man. You know what I mean? Especially now with the uh, with the elections, you've got two total different parties separating, two, two two totally different entities that one believes in the complete opposite of what I personally believe, and the other one is so extreme to the right that it's that it's pretty it's pretty it's pretty scary. Our ideologies are just so different. I feel that it would cause a war. He's taking no chances. Like tens of thousands here, he's a prepper, people who stockpile food and weapons. That's an entire Costco thing of hot dogs. Those are my own reloads. He tells me he and his friends have also hidden a million bullets in the desert. So you go and bury this thing? Absolutely. Where do you, you go and bury this? That's none of your business. <laughs> Alan pulled out some biscuits he's been storing for some time. Are you allergic to uh, coconut or anything like that? Oils or anything? Cool. That's 10 years old. It's 10 years old. Mm -hmm. So if Armageddon happens, this is what you turn to. This is what will keep you going. Mm, one thing, yeah. And so they're preparing for Armageddon, whatever that may be. What's certain is that there will be plenty of anger if Hillary Clinton is elected. Less clear is what, if anything, her enraged opponents might actually do.